What is up, Notre folks? And YKA31 here, here and CAA13 online ranked. I'm playing a lot of I online ranked games lately. I typically don't play many, but I'm on a big time custom playbook kick. Still fiddling around with this um, run spread playbook. I gotta stop fiddling around with it sooner or later and just say, you know what, I got what I need, I'm done with it. But I'm not there yet. And I'm also trying to put together a online Notre Dame highlight reel. And I'm playing, you know, your worst online ranked nightmare, LSU, and their loaded defense. Everything all hopped up on aggressive in the game plan settings and man blitzes every single play. You know, here I am wanting to practice my custom playbook and dealing with this nonsense. Finding out what works, what doesn't, and dealing with, you know, NFL blitz game, set, game plan settings and six and seven man pressure every single play. But whatever. I'm going to go on a rant on online ranked gaming and the state of it in another video coming up very, very soon. And I have not forgotten about Madden. For you Madden guys, don't worry. But anyhow, apparently Notre Dame won a very important game this past week. <laughs> you knew that was coming. First and foremost, a big thank you to Mr. Lane They'll Kiffin. Take over at the 34. I need Lane Kiffin's home address. I have a thank you card and some leftover holiday Thanksgiving candy. Maybe give him a little box and a thank you card for his epic absolutely epic closer not what a relief it is to the goal line play calling to work with. thank you lane kiffin for being you and once again showing what a farce and a fraud that you are as you continue to ride your father's good name into the ground thanks for that but notre dame is in the bcs national championship game it's been a long time coming. A long, long time coming. Mr. Brian Kelly, if he wins that game, can be head coach at Notre Dame until he has Inside both feet, six feet under. I mean, even now, he's got enough, you know, goodwill banked to last a while. When you think about what Notre Dame was three, four, five years ago under Mr. Charlie Weiss and really ever Notre since Dame Lou Holtz left, this just goes, I, it again, I've, I've said this a thousand times, in college football having the right type of guy, the right fit for your program and what they need is is everything you know these traditional powerhouse programs you know that have that have been around since the beginning of time the only thing that brings them down is ncaa sanctions and bad coaching decisions because they have a natural permanent recruiting base just by being who they are the only thing that will screw them up is bad management or the NCAA police knocking on your door. And Notre Dame went through a parade of bad coaching choices. Bob Davey, Tyrone Willingham, Charlie Weiss. They finally have the kind of guy who has the type of creativity and adaptability that you need for today's college game. He has a system that he believes in, that he expects his players to play. He holds them accountable for playing his style. And he teaches. He and he recruits like a mother. And Notre Dame has gotten better and better and better each year. The players that he inherited have gotten better. So that's the, that, that's the telltale sign that Charlie Weiss was a bad coach. When you look at Manti Teo, 
Charlie Rice recruited Manti Teo. But Manti Teo was considered a little bit of a, of a disappointment. And, you know, BK held his feet to the fire and helped develop that kid into the beast that we see today. Inside the 10. Touchdown, Irish. Good old athletic defensive lineman. But as far as the USG game went, I was very nervous throughout the game. It looks like that in the long run I'm going to be wrong about Everett Golson, but the kid still scares the heck out of me at times. And I guess it's just because he's, you know, still learning on the fly and he has a little bit of that, um, fly by the seat of, you know, your pants nature to him, but he also seems to have that it factor. You know, I gotta admit, Notre Dame would not have gone undefeated with Tommy Reese playing quarterback. And one or two of those quarterbacks are probably going to end up transferring because you have Reese who's going to be a senior, Hendricks is a sophomore, Gunner is redshirting, and they're bringing in another, you know, top tier guy, Malik Zaire, if any of you guys follow recruiting. You know? Only so many guys can hold clipboards. But, you know, it's starting to look like Everett Golson is going to be, you know, the right fit for, you know, what Brian Kelly wants. And you can see that he started to open up the offense a little bit. Run more of that um, up-tempo style and, you know, spray the ball around. And once again, Notre Dame's defense came through. And here's the odd thing about Notre Dame defensively. They're a very, very good defense, but they can't cover, which is very unusual for a top-rated defense. You know, front seven, they're very good, very athletic. They have four guys who are going to play on Sundays, at least. Teo, Tuit, Nix, and Lewis Moore. But... And it is the back the end is they want to get back in the game. really, the really weak. They have a guy who they recruited to play a, you know, Theo Riddick hybrid running back, um, wide receiver type of role, who they converted to corner because because of injuries. They have another corner, um, Bennett Jackson, who used to be a wide receiver, Low Wood. Got injured for the season early. Jamor Slaughter got injured Here's for the season right early. Side. You know, Zeke Mata, he's a heavy hitter. You know, but they don't cover very well at all. USC had guys running by him all night. They got one interception on an underthrow where um, Kavari Russell was beat, but the ball was underthrown. And those receivers were running, you know like Jamaican sprinters. And if you remember the Miami game, Miami had guys running by the Notre Dame secondary all night long. They just couldn't hit them. But a great front seven can um, hide a lot of ills. Now as far as who I would rather see them play. As a fan, I would love to see um, Alabama and Nick Saban and Brian Kelly going at it, two of my uh, favorite coaches. I've a couple of coaches who I've always been a very big fan of. Um, I like Urban Meyer, even though he's a bit of a dodgy dude. Um, BK, um, Saban, Malzahn, Rich Rod, June Jones. Those are guys who I like a lot. But as far as the best chance to win the game, I would like Georgia to win the SEC championship game and get into the game. <laughs> so I think they match up better against Georgia than they do against Alabama because Nick Saban had a month to dissect Everett Golson's warts. You know, it makes me a little bit nervous. It's a little bit of a dicey proposition, even though I think Alabama's defense has some holes that it didn't play. have last year, um, mainly um, along Back the perimeter. Going right. Up the middle, they're still very strong, but they can be supported outside, but the problem is 
Notre Dame doesn't really have much in the way of guys who can make plays in space to the outside. You have Eifert, who's a matchup problem when he's, you know, split out wide. And Theo Riddick can do a lot of things. I mean, how good did he play Saturday? Someone's going to get a late round steal in the draft with him as far as a uh, multi-purpose back. That would have been nice getting that INT. But Notre Dame doesn't really have a playmaker who can make plays you know, on the move after the catch in space, at least not one that's really developed yet. He's taken down at about the third. And I don't think they would match up well with Alabama for that reason. Line. Georgia has a good pass rush, but I think they can handle Georgia offensively. I think Alabama's offensive line can match up well and they make the stop at about the three yard or, or better the with Notre Dame's front seven big play here. and I don't have bring him as down. much confidence the... in what's his name Aaron Murray Where? Gets it on the draw. playing He's a strong game five. in a big spot as I do AJ McCarron goal and the offense is only four yards away from being able to take the lead so for those reasons, I would like to see Georgia back. in the game. Off, and that's gonna and how fitting run. is this? A goal line stand. He went to his money route he leaps one he time leaps too many. And I hold game. on. If you have a custom playbook, which is Maryland Eye, Power Eye, and a bunch of five wide sets. That's not a custom playbook. Kirk, That's a money play playbook. In this one? Well, I think these Gosh. guys came out here today and showed worst they online rank LSU has ever ever been. But anyhow, trouble at all. But it ended up being more competition. I am rooting handle. for I Notre Dame, Georgia. This one and it came that back gives my Fighting Irish a best chance of winning a national championship and making me a very very happy man. So that is that. Hope you guys enjoyed. Talk to you all later. Peace. Here's a look at our player of the game. EA Sports will donate $10,000 in his name to his school's general scholarship fund. Thanks for joining us for another game of NCAA Football 13. For Kirk, Aaron, and everyone here at EA Sports, I'm Brad Nessler saying goodbye. We'll see you next time.